Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. FlightSim.com's Force Feedback Yoke Review, coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Today is part one of our three-part series that I'll be doing on the CLS-60 force feedback yoke. Now they also have a CLS-120, which is double the force of this one, but we're going to be focusing on the CLS-60 in this review. Now before we jump into the review, I have two disclaimers. One, FlightSim.com sent me the yoke for review. However, I am not being paid for my reviews and all the opinions about the product are mine and mine alone. FlightSim.com is also not privy to any of my videos beforehand and they are seeing everything just as you are. My second disclaimer is I am not a pilot, so I will not be able to compare the actual forces in a real aircraft to the force feedback yoke and the forces that are applied with it. However, I feel this is a small caveat as I'll be going over much of the detailed information about the yoke, such as tech specs, dimensional specs, hardware details, ease of upgrade, software, and of course, demonstrate the forces inside a Microsoft Flight Simulator. In part one of the series, we will do a quick unboxing of the product, go over all the dimensions of the yoke so that you can prepare your home cockpit for this. We will then talk about any technical specs as well as the warranty and extended warranty on the yoke. And once we're done with that, we're going to take a deeper dive into the internals of the yoke and we're going to tear this thing apart. Once we're done with that, we'll slap everything back together and we'll move on to part two. In part two of the series, we'll take a deeper dive into the software for the force feedback yoke. We'll first connect the yoke to our PC, followed by the download and install of the force feedback software. We'll then run through the calibration process in Windows. We will then go over all the settings and effects that are in the force feedback software, learn how to save different profiles. In part three, we'll launch into Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I'll try to demonstrate the forces that the yoke produces. And for this, I've got something a little special up my sleeve. You'll just have to wait and see what that is. We will also check out some of the custom effects that the force feedback software has, and how that translates to the yoke actions in the sim. We'll then wrap everything up with my final conclusion about the product, where I'll go over some of the pros and cons. As in all my reviews, I will keep this as objective as possible until my final conclusion, where I'll go over my thoughts about the product and software. Now, if you have any comments or questions throughout today's video, please leave them down below in the comments section. All the links for today's video will be down in the description as well. Now, those of you who are considering purchasing the CLS-60 or the 120, I would highly suggest to check out that material. If you enjoyed today's content and find it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's hop right into the unboxing of the CLS-60. All right, so that was a quick unboxing of the force feedback yoke. Now I would like to go over some of the dimensional specs so that you can prepare your home cockpit for the CLS-60. 
Now for this, I'm just going to overlay all of the drawings and specs on the screen, but all of the information can be found on the Discord for FlightSim.com. I'll also post a link down below for that. All right, so now that you've got your cockpit set up for this thing, let's go over some of the technical specs about the yoke. The max pitch force is 60 newtons, or 13.5 pounds. The max roll force is 4 newton meters, or 2.95 foot pounds. The roll travel is plus or minus 90 degrees, and the pitch travel, in or out, is 165 millimeters. The power and voltage supply is 24 volts at 160 watts. On the yoke, we have several buttons and switches. We have an electric trim switch, which can also be used to map for other things inside the aircraft, so long as you have another hardware trim that you're using, such as on the Bravo throttle quadrant with the trim wheel. The yoke also has three button switches and one eight direction hat switch. For safety, the CLS-60 comes with an emergency power-off switch. The weight of the CLS-60 is 9.2 kilograms. I'll also put that in pounds on the screen as well. Now let's talk about the warranty of the CLS-60 yoke. From the factory, you get a one-year warranty on the product. But what does that mean? Does that mean you can send it back if you don't like it? Does that mean you could send it back if there's a part that breaks? Well, not exactly. So FlightSim.com decided to take this a little bit different route than you would normally expect. Because this is such a big product and requires such a big box, shipping costs are probably pretty expensive. So due to the modularity of the force feedback yoke itself, anything that may fail or break or need upgraded should be easy enough to do that for yourself. Fabian can send you those parts and then you could install those yourself to get yourself back up and running or to have a little bit of an upgrade. So what about the extended warranty? Well, again, they've taken a little bit different approach to this as well. The extended warranties will not necessarily be a set price to extend the warranty of the product. Instead, Fabian chose to use a percentage-based system. Now, what I mean by that is whatever the cost of the product is, they will charge you 15% of the product price to extend the warranty for an additional two years. So that'll give you a three-year warranty on the product. Now that also parlays me into the next portion of this, and that's price. So as of right now, this is the beginning of July. If you are purchasing this from the manufacturer, FlightSim.com, the price for the product is now $8.99. And once they move into distributors for the product, the price will increase. Let's move into software compatibility. What simulators will the software and the yoke be compatible with? Of course, Microsoft Flight Simulator and most likely Flight Sim 2024, as well as X-Plane 11, X-Plane 12, Prepared 3D version 4.5.11 and higher. Okay, so that's pretty much going to take care of all the technical specs, warranty information, and pricing about the yoke. Now let's get into the fun part. We're going to tear this thing down. So I've got to reposition the camera, add some more lights, and I'll bring you guys back in just a moment. Okay, so as far as teardown information, I didn't find any instructions on the website. So we're just going to go by what I think we need to take apart to get inside. So it looks like I've got a couple bolts to take off. So we're going to take this bolt off the front this bolt off the front. On the side, we have two bolts on each side. And then if we take a look at the back, I've got three bolts at the very top of the back. Now, for those of you who love power tools, I would never recommend to reinstall any of the screws with a power tool. Make sure you do that by hand. But as far as removing any of the screws, go ahead and use your power tool for that.
Now when you're removing these screws, be very careful that you don't strip the heads out of the screws. Okay, so we have now removed all the screws for this cover. This should just pick right up. Now, before I do, I wanna go over one quick question that you might have. Is removing any of this gonna void my warranty? Technically, it should not void your warranty because you, the consumer, have to open this up anyway to replace any of the parts that are inside of it. The same thing goes with the yoke on the front. They make other yokes that are gonna be modular so that you can swap on and off, and I can't imagine that it would void your warranty by changing out the yoke that they make for the product itself. All right, so this is the first glance inside of the Force Feedback CLS 60 yoke. So now let me grab the camera and we'll get some close-ups of the inside of the yoke. Okay, so this is the inner workings of the Force Feedback yoke. Let's take a deeper dive in and let's check out each of the components that are on the inside. First, let's start with the board. Okay, so if we take a look at the board itself, we can see here that it is marked CLS Yoke version 1.03. We have a proprietary board from flightsim.com, and we are using an STM32 chip, which is a 32-bit chip. If we take a look at all the plugs that are connected into the board itself, they are hot glued in to help prevent them from coming loose. The next thing I want to take a look at is the roll motor for the force feedback. Now the roll motor itself does not have any markings on it, so I can't go over any of those specs. The motor itself is connected by a cogged pulley with a cogged belt that then attaches to another cog pulley around the shaft of the force feedback yoke. The width of the belt that is transferring the energy is just about 15 millimeters wide. So that's a pretty substantial belt. Now if we take a look around the front of the cog that is attached to the shaft, you can see here the USB cable that runs down the center of the shaft that will actually connect to all the buttons that are on the yoke itself. I also would like to talk about the structure that all of the motors are bolting to. This appears to be aluminum as my magnet does not actually um, attract any of it other than the yoke handle itself. So I'm assuming all of this is going to be aluminum. The thickness of that aluminum is just about six millimeters thick. So it's pretty robust, I will say that. Next, I would like to answer a question for those of you who may need to replace the roll motor either with an upgraded motor or a replacement. The motor itself is attached to this six millimeter bracket. Now this bracket is actually separate from the bracket that's on the unit itself. This is a separate piece. On the bottom of this bracket, it bolts to your main frame, which is right here, and they use elongated holes underneath so that this whole piece will slide back and forth. Fabian's also included a tensioning screw right here that will pull the entire assembly this way. So then you can tighten up the three bolts that are underneath to keep the bracket secured in place. All right, so I hope this comes through, but after you tighten up the tensioning screw for the belt, underneath here are the three screws that need to be tightened to secure the motor in place. All right, so now let's come around to the back side of the yoke, and this is the central yoke shaft. It goes through a bearing inside of this bearing block, and that's secured with a coupler here to make sure that the shaft cannot be pulled any further out. All right, so now let's take a look at the pitch axis and how he's got this set up on the force feedback yoke. If we take a closer look, you can see we're using a linear guide that the entire carriage assembly is going to ride along. So how this works is there's two chrome molly rods that are embedded into each side of this rail. Underneath of the carriage, there are little wheels with a half moon shape on the inside that hug the rod to give you a smooth motion backwards and forwards. If we take a look to the rear of the unit, here is our motor that is driving the force feedback for our pitch. 
Now the way this motor connects to the carriage assembly is a little bit different than the roll axis. Here we're using a coupler to couple the shaft from the motor to the shaft that's on a cogged pulley underneath of this cover. On that pulley rides a belt that will pull the carriage forward and backward along this linear guide. The belt that they're using for the pitch axis is just about the same size as the belt that's used on the roll axis. The entire assembly is then bolted to the bottom of the yoke by these plates. Again, these are most likely aluminum plates. You have one in the back and there's one here in the front section. Now, if we take a look at the front of the unit where the main yoke shaft goes through the cavity of the body of the yoke, we do not have any bearing or bushing in this section. So there is slight play up and down, but that's not going to affect anything for you. As far as replacing the motor for your pitch axis, this one you do not have any belt tensioners. For this one, you will simply unscrew the bolts that hold the bracket that the motor sits in. You will also loosen a set screw that is down inside of the coupler itself. And then the entire assembly should then pull off so that you can replace. All right, so that is the inner workings of the force feedback yoke. If you have any questions about this, please let me know down below in the comment section. All right, so that's going to wrap us up for part one of the review. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comment section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tickle on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. For all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.